In this video, we're going to be starting off in Prague, taking a bus through the plains and mountain ranges to Wrocław, where we'll be picking up a car to drive to a castle wedding in the middle of Poland. Once we're done there, we're going to be headed to Warsaw to enjoy some of the delicious food there and get a taste of the more modern Poland before finally taking a train to Krakow and experiencing the more historic side of things. But first, we need to wake up early to catch this bus. It is 6 a.m. The plan today is we're going to catch a bus to Wrocław and then from there, drive to the wedding venue. We're going to pack up here and be on our way. The bus we took was around $26 and it was around a three hour ride. And we're going through the Czech mountain ranges over the border to Poland. And it's a really beautiful drive. We came in spring, so all the fields were out in bloom. But at the same time, there's snow on the mountain peaks. After we arrived in Wrocław, we were both hoping we'd have a little bit more time to do stuff, but we ended up just getting a quick bite to eat at the train station, Tiffany got a coffee, and we grabbed some lunch before picking up the rental car. We finally got our Czech food. Okay, we got to Wrocław apparently is what it's called. If you see me holding this microphone like I'm cosplaying a news reporter, it's because the microphone holder got smashed by a door in Prague, so sorry if it's clipping. Picked up the car on our way to the wedding venue now. We finally got to eat some Czech food, and now that we're in Poland... Uh, now I have to drive. Okay, I'll see how this goes. So apparently they have these old palaces and castles all over Europe you can rent out as wedding venues for a pretty good price. This one was tastefully redone to keep the old aesthetic, but still kept the palace feel to it. I don't know what exactly this cost, but they got the whole palace, 12 bedrooms, and the whole wedding party stayed there for three nights. It was such an amazing wedding. If you're thinking about doing something like this, I definitely recommend going for it. One of my favorite things is when you go to the middle of nowhere and you're clearly from out of town and people are just asking you, like, why are you here? <laughs> Not in a mead way or anything, but this just kept happening to us in Poland. Being at this remote castle and going into the little village that doesn't see a lot of tourists. We are just leaving the wedding. Here, this is the castle. We're pulling away. I'm so tired. This might be the last thing I ever film. I'm gonna die in a Polish car crash. But uh, next up is another four hour road trip to Warsaw. I'll see you there. Okay, so we just arrived in Warsaw and Tiffany has decided we want to get a tattoo. So we're gonna go back out. Here's our room. Here's our room tour. Hey, here's our, here's a painting. We got this, we had a free night for Marriott and used some points. We'll be here for two nights. Here's a bathroom. Here's me talking to this microphone because I broke the stand. And oh, the floor's heated. Okay, we're gonna go back out and try and explore the world a little bit. <clears throat> and maybe get a tattoo if they have availability. So we had done literally no research on Warsaw at all. We just kind of started wandering around. We found a tattoo place she wanted to go to, so we figured that might be a good place to start. We took the tram there, but the place ended up being on the second floor and Tiffany was too timid. So just wandered back to where we were staying and stumbled across whatever we stumbled across. So we wanted pierogi and we ended up at this place that we saw that had a bunch of Google reviews. Now it's kind of on the main strip. It just screams of tourist trap. You know, the food was okay. But if you had a couple of drinks, this place could be a vibe. Okay, so we just finished our first day in Warsaw. We're back at the hotel now after a long, almost four hour drive with the traffic and everything. Actually, the traffic wasn't too bad. It was just a four hour drive from the palace where we had the wedding. Um, we didn't do a lot of vlogging today, but we bought this donut we're about to eat. So this is called a panczki, which is like a filled Polish donut we picked up on the way back. Mm. That's really good. I usually don't really like stuffed donuts, but this tastes really good. Oh, it's heavy. It's almost like a donut, a little more cakey. It's good. It's a little sweet for my taste, but it's good. 
Tomorrow we have one more day in Warsaw until uh, we take a train down to Krakow. We didn't do any research before we came to Warsaw. We're trying to figure out what we're gonna do tomorrow. So oh. you're gonna see that now. Yes. We are headed to a cafe. Cafe Bistro. And then we're gonna go on a free walking tour. So we'll have to stop at the ATM to pick up some cash. And one more thing. I love waking up bright and early on these holidays because these streets were so packed last night and it's 8 a.m. now and everything's completely empty, so. Something we didn't learn until right after this when we did the walking tour, this Cafe Bristol place is part of the most famous hotel in Poland. It's a chocolate raspberry tartlet and it looks really yummy. One thing we learned last night when doing our research is apparently the city was pretty much decimated after World War II. So all these buildings you see are actually, they look old, but they're actually like pretty new, built within the last 50 years. It's a pretty interesting fact as you walk around to think about. It's kind of like Disney. All right, so we had our breakfast. Yes. We're about to do our first activity, which is the uh, free walking tour of the yeah. old town. Now we booked this walking tour. Maybe I shouldn't say free, it's choose your price. This company is called Walkative. It's a Polish company and they have a couple different tours you can take. We just did the historic center and I think we ended up giving them like 50 bucks. One thing we didn't realize was that it was the 20th anniversary of Poland entering the European Union. So there are all kinds of celebrations and festivities going on that we just happened to stumble across. Okay, we're on our way to the Neon Museum. And I just stepped on vomit. <laughs> Tiffany stepped in and vomit outside of the uh, subway. The Neon Museum is pretty accessible. <laughs> She's a little upset right now. And uh, Poe Trans has been great other than the vomit that we stepped in. Post-communism Warsaw was known for its vibrant neon signs, and this museum attempts to preserve some of that. They asked us not to use our actual cameras here, but they're fine with like phone camera and Instagram stuff. And you can get some really cool Instagram photos. Okay, so that was the neon museum we just finished up. Yeah. Got some pretty cool, cool photos in there. And it's like a quick museum too. It was like maybe 15 bucks. 15 bucks for the two of us. Honestly, you recommend? like, recommend. It's really cheap. Honestly, it didn't take too long. I think if you go and like read each sign and watch like a little movie, you could probably be there for like 45 minutes. Next stop was gonna be a milk bar, which is kind of like a traditional place to eat. It's almost like cafeteria style. There's just a huge menu. You pick a couple items and then they'll call your number and your food will come out on like a tray. I got a tomato soup, some Ukrainian pierogi, and a pancake with cottage cheese. And it was 29 zlots, so basically seven bucks. This is the Ukrainian pierogi. It's stuffed with potato, cheese, and I think maybe meat. Really good and flavorful compared to the pierogies we had last night. And this last thing was like a crepe stuffed with cottage cheese. Kind of tangy, kind of sweet. Delicious. Okay, we're running to our final event of the evening, which is a Chopin concert. The restaurant's five minutes away, so we gotta make sure we get there on time. Now we ended up getting a quick bite to eat at this restaurant. It was kind of burgers, potatoes, and coleslaw. Now Chopin is actually Polish, and so is Marie Curie, actually. They love to claim both of them. They have concerts basically every night you can go to. but it's a great relaxing way to end the evening. And that's the last major event we did in Warsaw. Last thing to do is just kind of walk back at night, see how the city changes. It's always so beautiful to see kind of like the vibrant city at night with like the soft lighting coming off the buildings. There's so many people walking around and there's all kinds of events going on. Just great vibes. Final stop on the trip is Krakow. Now Krakow is the old Polish capital before it was moved to Warsaw. And it's a lot more historic, not much is destroyed during the war. We took a train here, it's very easy to get to from Warsaw. We just got to Krakow, we're gonna try where our hotel is. Just got to our hotel in Krakow. So we got this Hyatt place, it's kind of 
middle of nowhere, but I had a free night. Free night at Hyatt, so we had to use it somewhere. But um, yeah, let's go check out the city center. I was only here for a day, so we were kind of limited to exploring the main city center. I've actually never had rose hill. Mm. It's good. It almost reminds me of like um, you're getting kind of like apricot jam, like mixed with like a berry. Um, eight puzzles. Two USD. Yeah. The biggest attractions that people go here for are Auschwitz and the salt mines, both of which I miss, but Tiffany got to stay a few extra days and was able to go to both. Now, just because we decided to stay in the main part of the city doesn't mean there wasn't anything to do. We spent our day in Krakow, eating food, drinking coffee, and we stumbled across this festival sort of things being set up. Job test stop. Get some uh, hot dog. And the uh, store clerk re recommended. recommended the Thousand Island dressing. How is your job hot dog? It's good. I like the uh, bun that is in the bun. Okay, and here's our accommodation for the night. We're st we're gonna take a rest. We're gonna go um, charge some stuff up, and then we're gonna go back out at night and see all this festival stuff and everything. How it looks at night. So, uh, cut to that probably. On our way back, we grabbed dinner at this place just outside the city center. It might have been the best place we ate the whole trip. We started with a pierogi sampler platter. They were stuffed with spinach, mushroom, pumpkin, cheese, onion. For the entree, Tiffany had this pesto chicken with mashed potato, and I had a beef cutlet with mashed potato. never seen this in any uh, travel video. The Krakow Ferris wheel at night. It's such a cool little view of the ocean. Everybody's kind of hanging out. We've got the uh, dinner cruises going out over the ocean. Not the ocean, the little river. A lot of people just chilling in their, uh, their festival meals that they got over here. This is the last thing I wanted to see. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but the fire breathing dragon at night. So that's gonna do it for Krakow. Here's just like the final view I'll leave you with. Kind of looking out over the water here. Yeah, we saw everything once, day and night. What would you say was your favorite day or night? Oh wait, look, fire breathing dragon. I'd say everything's definitely cooler at night. Maybe even dusk. Dusk is probably the ideal time to go. Just kind of like having a sunset over that square is very beautiful. I don't know, going during the day is a lot of crowds. It's very hot in the middle of May. So I'd say go at night if you can or sunset or sunrise. It's pretty much rule of thumb for anything. That's gonna wrap up our road trip. If you liked the video, there's a button for that. And if you really liked it, maybe subscribe. Check out some of my other videos and I will see you all next time.